Well, we have something happening in the mini little fruit forest. So let's take a walk over here. It's a little messy. I'm doing some switching from summer to fall. Um, new thing, I added a little, our old mailbox. See there? And then I have like little clips for the garden, gloves, ties, shovels, just stuff I use. Isn't that great? Cherry tree had a lot of blooms and not a single bud or a uh, fruit. I don't know. I haven't quite had it a year yet. So anyways, papayas. Another papaya. I have papayas everywhere. Sweet potato, lemon, some beans, and look, looky, it is yellow. Look it. I don't know if I should pick it yet or not. Just don't know, but it's the first one to turn yellow. And these are round. I don't know. I seen somebody post online they had a round one in it. it wasn't very sweet. This one over here though, for some reason that papaya, it just has massive ones on there. It's the biggest one. The papayas anyways. And then Mulberry I had a couple of really tiny ones, but as you can see it's still new one up just been letting it get used to the garden. I'm going to give it a good trimming this winter. Let's go over and check the bananas. Because they don't seem like they are doing much. Here's some sunflowers. Yeah, it's some sunflowers coming up. Some little tomatoes. Some bok choy. So let's take a walk. Not these. These were planted here this year. Oh, my bougainvillea has totally taken over this. This trellis I built from sticks from the, the bougainvillea over there. That one, I trim it every year. I keep it in the tree and up so nobody walks into the thorns. And I used them to make this trellis for this bougainvillea. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. But anyways... This papaya tree isn't even a year old, and it's so huge, but it has small papayas. And I think the reason why these papayas are so small is because there's so many banana trees. So, I will not be planting. I actually didn't plant that. It grew up on its own, so it's free. I cannot complain. But papayas don't like sharing with bananas. So here's the first rack. I cut the flower off as somebody had suggested to see. But it doesn't look like it has done anything. I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's just so slow. I mean, you can see they're not very big. They don't look like they've changed in size and shape. Nothing. I don't know. I will have to go look on my video that I posted. I will put a link to it in the description below. The first video I did when this first came, the flower, so we can see how how long it's been. And this is the second one. This one, I have not cut the flower yet, but I'm thinking about it because it's, you know, hasn't done anything in a while. It's also just, like, sitting in limbo. We had to uh, prop this one up. So I'm thinking of chopping the flower off. And uh, this one came out. I think within a month from the last one. So I will link a, a link. I will add a link in the description to the very first video I did when these flowers came out. So we can see how old they are. They're heavily fed. I feed these guys a lot. I'll show you how I do it. Oh, and look at this. I got this from a lady. A little lady. This is a butterfly. Some kind of butterfly tree. It does all these little white flowers. And look at the leaves are identical 
to a papaya, only smaller. It is absolutely crazy. This is the butterfly tree, and this is the papaya. Isn't that really cool? I had no idea it was going to be like that when I put them in there. And we have some peppermint down there. Oh, and my dragon fruit. This is my first time growing dragon fruit. And this one right here, if you can see it, was about th this tall. I just put it in maybe two months ago. And it's all the way up. I'm going to have to get up there and uh, turn it to, to go across the trellis I built for it. I built this little, this little trellis for it. <laughs> Yeah, they're going going quick. And I took a cutting here to see if I can get another one to grow. I'm very, very new to dragon fruit. This here is some organic celery I bought from the grocery store. Which, you know, I cut and ate. And look at it. Isn't it adorable? I have not had any luck getting celery to grow with by seed. So I said, you know what, I'll just try. And I have I have a passion fruit here. And this is a volunteer. Oh look. Huh, some kind of melon. But something is just feasting away on it. There's another one that didn't get pollinated. And sweet potatoes that came up on their own. Anyways, let's go back to the bananas. So how I feed my bananas, I have learned, real quick, pineapples love to grow with bananas. These pineapples aren't even a year old, and look at them, they're huge. They love it. So I love planting my pineapples around the banana trees. So I bury a bucket in the ground, well this one I have to clean out, and I dump my kitchen scraps in there. I have one over here. Just ouch. I have to make sure I make them critter proof. See in there. And I continue to keep them kitchen scraps in there. Make sure it's watered down when I water them. And of course, lots of water. And the bananas, as you can see, love it. Only I think I may have to add another bucket here and then. Let's go through here. Oh. More pineapples. This banana tree here is a new one. I just bought this one a few months ago. If you're wondering about the pole and the string, it's because we thought that hurricane was coming and I'm not taking none of it down until hurricane season is over. This Now all these banana trees, all of them here, are dwarf Cavendish. They're all from one banana tree that I bought. Banana plant. I bought one three years ago. And you can see how many I have now from buying one. They're all dwarf Cavendish. Now this one I just recently bought maybe two months ago. It is one of the large varieties. It starts with an M. Musa or Musa, something like that. I don't know. I can put it in the description when I find out. So I'm curious to see how this does. And if this one throws off new ones, I'm going to plant them all along the back. because The sun rises over here. So in the summer, it's directly above us. In the winter, it's more over there. So, the tall ones need to be on this side. It's not to block out the sun in the winter. Anyways, there's the bananas. There you have it. Plant your pineapples with your bananas, but not papayas. This, look how small. See how small the papayas are? They're very small. Now the tree the tree is grown exceptionally fast. Much faster than the other ones, but small fruit. So I am thinking the bananas are just taking all the nutrition. Oh, and also for your bananas, heavily mulch. 
always put their leaves, the banana leaves, back down. Whenever I mow, I always bag. I put lots of cut, cut grass in there. It helps with the weeds. In the winter, I fill it with leaves and lots of kitchen scraps. Yep. And there you have it. All right, that is just a quick little update. My little front yard garden. Just look at these peanuts. I cannot wait to see how many. They have done so well. This is only the second time I've grown peanuts. My husband loves peanuts. And the birds love peanuts. So I'm going to have to look. See, there's one. Lucky. And also this ginger just came on its own. This ginger, all this ginger in here I did not plant. So a lot of this is just sold from the summer. So there you go. Um, potatoes. This is my first time growing potatoes. I'm giving it a try. Blackberries, lots of blackberries. Oh, and this was a test. This was a test too. I wanted to see how sweet potatoes did as a ground cover. And look at it. Isn't it beautiful? It totally took over the flower bed next to it. These are all in a pot. Just a pot. <laughs> That's it. One pot. And now I have all these. Look at the going on the porch. Everywhere. So I may har start harvesting some soon. This is also in a pot over here. You can see the pot. And I want to get some slip started to get some more in the ground because here in Florida, technically you can grow sweet potato year round. It doesn't really grow much during the winter, but it'll be in the ground and as soon as the temperature gets right, it'll just take off. You don't even have to worry about it. So I'm gonna get some slips going and my goal for next summer, seeing how this did, is to have it in, that's what I built this mini food forest. This was supposed to be taken over by sweet potatoes, but for some reason they didn't like it too much over here. They just stuck around back here, and I think it's because it got shaded out. And the sun, let me stand back here. I learned one thing I did wrong. My shampoo ginger, turmeric. What I did wrong was I put all the tall plants, trees here and nothing here. So the sun comes up on this side and goes up down that side. So everything this summer just got the snot beat out of it from the sun because there was nothing protecting it. So this is why I got some papayas. I started sticking papayas over here. So I want this year, summer, I'm gonna have papayas. And I'm saying papayas because they're so easy to grow and they grow so fast. Even if I don't get fruit from them, they will provide great little shade for the food forest next summer. This is the first time I've had this little food forest. It's new. It cost me nothing to build this. We had trees cut, so I used all stumps having our trees cut and I leaves and grass clippings I put cardboard down all in it I cover it all in cardboard and lots of leaves and lots of grass and I just keep laying it to uh, prevent weeds I do get the dollar the annoying little dollar guy I pull it up whenever and to feed these new papayas. I have my buckets in the ground, as you can see here. And I put kitchen scraps in there, see? They have big holes, of course, on the bottom of the buckets. And I have critters that come in at night, so I have to keep them. They actually <laughs> would take the lid off. I had one brick on there, and they still got into it, so I have to put two on there. So, yeah, I have them around. Um... So I'm hoping next summer to have this full of sweet potatoes because I'm also conditioning the soil by doing this layers and layers and layers. 
and I'm rambling. But there you have it. We just cut this moringa like three weeks ago maybe because it got so huge and it's beautiful already. I absolutely love the moringa tree. I love it. I dry them, the leaves and put them in our smoothies every morning. Just let the leaves dry and then crumble them up in the run them through the blender and I put them in a jar and it sits next to the blender for smoothies. It's like taking the vitamins. You don't need to buy vitamins. Just uh, have a moringa tree. Alright. Have any questions? Want to share any tips? Leave comments. Thank you for watching. See ya.